We're at the Crocodile in downtown Seattle where a lot of huge bands from this area have played over the years. And of course, one of those, Alice in Chains, here celebrating their new album, Rain Air Fog, which is out August 24th by uh, holding a couple of shows here. And they have a pop-up shop that's on in here. We'll show you that in a moment. But first, we have a very important person we need to talk to. Sitting in the booth in our club, just looking at them. <laughs> well, you're doing great. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Uh, long time Alice in Chains drummer Sean Kinney. Sean, appreciate you taking a few minutes to talk to me. Now, before we started here, you were talking about making an album the same way you always have. Tell me about that process. Yeah, I mean, we just do them for the same reason. We make them the same way we always did. We go in and try to get the performances you know technology's changed and it, it's it, uh, it can speed up the process but you can also rely on it too much to to uh, fix everything that you're doing we're not really you know we didn't really come up that way so we still kind of takes us longer we kind of go old school and try to get the right performances and play the song all the way through and play the things and you know and then uh, the difference is instead of like cutting tape if you were going to do an edit something like that which is which people always did they you can try things and you can move things digitally which is cool a little bit to see oh you know we don't want to do that but we try not to do that much as much either so we still make music for the same reasons and the same thing and it's it's a selfish reason we just make music that we like try to make sure that we dig it you know like the guys in the room like yeah this is cool and then we've been really fortunate that uh some other people liked it too, you know, and allow us to do that of all, uh, after all that we've been through and all these years and still support it. And it doesn't get lost on us, you know, it's a pretty humbling thing. You can go anywhere in the world, if, you know, for decades and still to this day and people will show up and spend the night with you and let you play your songs and, you know, drop their issues and problems and whatever differences they may have, you know. You don't even speak the same language. Probably have different, you know, people in the audience have different probably religious beliefs and ethnic backgrounds and all this stuff that can get in the way and and people, you know, can use as a wedge to divide people and cause problems and music and sports, that all goes away. And so I wish I wish things operated more like what I get to be part of every night because it's I know it's possible, you know, like we see it night after night after night, and you, you got to travel the whole globe to do it, so it's definitely doable, you know, and and people go there and they just have a good time. They just sing and, and lose their shit and have fun, <laughs> have a good time, then everybody goes back to their life, you know, and I think I think that's, that's the coolest reward, you know, to be able to kind of take part in that and be able to host those things and you know, it's, it's pretty. It's a pretty great thing. You know, when you're younger, you don't you don't see things that way. You know, you learn through life, and, and also all that's come and gone, and all the, the ups and downs that we've been through. You know, it just it starts. It means more and more and more, especially the time. And there's more of it. You know, started with trying to play the central. You know, some suburban guy to, getting old enough to try to. You know, wouldn't it be cool if we could play the Central Tavern? You know, that was the goal. And, you know, so you goalpost moves. And, you know, so it's it's pretty it's a pretty cool cool thing. I mean, this week's a little overwhelming. I'm glad it's at home. It's long overdue, and uh, they're working us like crazy. You know, <laughs> I know you guys have had a wild yeah, week. Yeah, man, I'm running on about two hours of sleep. We were in Vancouver last night, but. It's, you know, it's it's so great that uh, all the people that are rallying around and putting all this cool stuff together and opportunities and, you know, Mariners and baseball night and, uh, you know, one of those things you always think of your whole life, living, living in the shadow of the space, and you know, wouldn't it be cool to play in there, you know? And they're like, sure, you can. I'm like, what? Really? Well, all right, let's, we better do that and take it off the list, you know? So <laughs> we got to do that the other night. And so, you know, it, it's it's cool, and it's really 
it's still it's still exciting, it's still new, it's still cool, there's still things to be done, and we still go about it for the same reasons and in the same way. So, well, did you ever imagine that it would? Like when you guys were young and just getting started, that this would, uh, I mean, I know you still look yeah. young, but that it would go on this long and still be so huge? No, I mean, I don't, no. I mean, you'd probably, oh, everybody dreams that, right? I mean, when you start playing an instrument or do whatever thing you're into, you know, I want to be the best and I want to be a rock star and I want to be, you know. But, it, you know, if those things happen, they're not really designed to last, they're not really built for longevity. And you know, bands usually last about five years. And and then people's taste move, you know, you move on. You were cool last week. You're only shiny and new once, you know. You're only you get one time to be new. And so it kind of becomes everybody else's and in society and fans and they decide if you have longevity. They decide those things. And in our case we didn't we didn't work that. I mean, we stopped doing things. We had a couple number one albums, you know, and we just quit talking to people. And you know, we had our reasons, which were great reasons for us to try to, you know, survive our lifestyles. But um, we we chose not to do any press, or you know, we step back from everything. It wasn't you know, as a business sense, probably not a great thing, but. Obviously, we didn't care about that. And without that, without, you know, infrastructure and a record company and people working these things, you know, like they do, there's a machine that turns on and like, you know, like this is part of it, right? Press and things. Um, it, it can fade away. And so what happened for us apparently is radio and people never quit doing that. And then you as you age, they're like, you're a classic rock band now, you know? We're on modern rock and classic rock, and the thing that you used to snicker at when you were a kid, like, <laughs> you find out to be, wow, that's probably one of the coolest honors if, you end up, if you're one of the people that uh, society and people allow you to be wedged in between Boston and Led Zeppelin. And, <laughs> you know, I don't know if that's a problem. I think it's kind of cool. It's all this shit we used to make fun of you, actually, I guess you can become, you know? So now... Just make fun of ourselves. Well, and I, you know, Susan was telling me you guys have a pretty wicked sense of humor. Is that? Yeah. I mean, does that help when you're in those close quarters on a tour to keep things light? Oh yeah. I mean, the whole thing's fairly ridiculous. You know, I mean, I look at it this way. I mean, does do you get into a tube and a staff of people drive you in your underwear and your bed to the door of the place you play? I mean, or go to work every day? You know, so. That's kind of what it is, you know. You know, you get there and then there's food for you and people, you know. And you go into a room and all these people came and you get to do the thing that you love to do for, you know, an hour or two and everybody has a good time. You hope everybody has a good time and, and then they go, yay, and tell you you're awesome. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't suck. But, you know, the it's the 22 hours of getting to each place is, is the skill that you learn, you know, because it's hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, run over here, go over here, watch out for this, go over here, stand in this room, stand over there, go to the airport, you know, so it's a lot of hurry up, wait, hurry up, wait, you're always rushing to get to a place to be crammed into a place, removed from people as much as possible that go to the next place, you know, and and the whole thing is just geared for the one thing that we only, that we care about, you know, just get the player music, you know, and and so, not everybody's built for that, you know, that's that's the deal. I mean, I think it's like you get this gypsy kind of mentality for a lot of people that do what we do, and so that's a real bonding thing because uh, so many people I've had over the years, girlfriends and friends, and they have come out on tour for like, you know, oh my God, it's so awesome, and they come out three days into it. I mean, they can stay at the hotel longer, just show up for the show, you know, eat catering when they want. They don't have to do any interviews or play or do, you know. And three days in, every time, three days are like, I don't know how you do this, <laughs> you know. Yeah, people don't realize it's yeah, work. Yeah. It's a job. Yeah, traveling's pretty grueling. So you either, you got the gene for it, you know. You're not allowed to take a crap on a $2 million tour bus, you know. So, you know, I'm at home for a few weeks and your body functions normally, right. 
And then the second, I don't know how it works, but the second the bus showed up yesterday, body chemistry just changes. I was like, well, I guess that's that, you know. It's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's like, you know, like, like trained little performing seals, right? Well, you're the, some of the best performing seals <laughs> I've ever seen. You're some of Seattle's finest seals. <laughs> Do you have any, I mean, you guys have obviously a huge body of work. Do you have any favorite songs? Like ones that you just yeah, love man. to play? Well, I mean, right now, it's new ones that nobody's heard that we get to play because they're newer to us. But I dig them all. I mean, they cha it changes. It can change by the day. So I'm like more focused on things we haven't played as much. And, and, and because of the legacy of the band and everything, you know, there's, there's a large and growing chunk of music that you that you kind of you know in concert you're gonna play and we used to kind of shun away from that when we were younger i remember when man of the box was like it became a big thing and we wouldn't play it and i remember the record company was just so angry with us but, you know you're just like you don't want to play it we're tired of playing it and uh as time goes on you learn a thing or two and you also realize you know it's not about you really, you know, and and, and the, you know it's about the audience. And for a lot of these people, it's the first time they're seeing you. It could be the last time they're seeing you, the only time they're seeing you, you know. And these are the songs that allow people to want to come here, you know. So, you know, we just try to try to keep it interesting for us to a degree. And it really, it really depends on how long we're allowed to play that night. You know, if there's a curfew with this, and you go to nine thirty, the curfew's at eleven. You know, building stops at eleven or whatever. So. We try to shoehorn as many songs as we can, and we try to cover the, the the entire scope of the band. You know, we try to represent something from all releases and all times of it. So, you know, we don't, and we we've never really relied on, you know, gags. You know, rock gags. We don't have extended drum solos and guitar solos, and we don't have pre-thought-out speeches. You know, like during the shows or hit your mark, you know, and we don't have pyro and cryo. And we just go out and try to play as many songs as we can in the amount of time that, that we're allotted, you know, so. Well, the fans obviously appreciate that. So let's talk about the new album. I mean, I, I can't help but wonder, I, I have days where I'm trying to find three words to finish a story because I'm doing it, you know, every single day. Right. I, after all these years, how do you pull that magic out of the sky and put something together like that. I mean, it, it's built up over a period of time. It's, you know, it took probably five years in between. But, you know, it takes a year or two to make a record for us. You, you compile ideas that you've been coming up with while you're on tour over here, somebody at their house, this there, Jerry's got this thing he's working on, these songs he's working on, and, and you kind of pass them around and then like, the ones that people are interested in, or you think might have something, then you you uh, you kind of pursue those, and you kind of put them in organize it, you know, A, B, C, and you weed through them, and you try to see see what you have, and then what what they turn into, you know, you work on them, and some of the ones you thought at the get go were like, wow, this is really the one, you know, at the end of the day become a sea song for you you know it's still a good song but this one took a place here you know and then it so it's a long process you know we're not in any race we're not in any hurry we're not we're not a pop act you know we're not we're not designed for the masses and we're not we're not upholding to anybody or anything and and we've always had the freedom to make the music we want and that was we were afforded that early on by having good representation like Susan and and uh, lawyers that fought for the right early on. Most fans don't get to have that. And so in lieu of money back then, we, we made sure that we we control what we want and can do what we want, pick our songs and our singles. And 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 uh, so that's given us the freedom. And because some of the, our choices early on against, you know, the, the big company would have a different idea and, and uh, some of our dumbass ideas seemed to work at the time. They had to just kind of be like, you know, we, we pulled off a few early victories that they were they were saying were probably giant mistakes, and we uh, they worked. So, you know, we got more and more leeway, and they just people just left us alone to do it, 
what we do, and that's kind of the whole part of you know being creative. You know, because I know a lot of other people that aren't in that situation in the music industry and entertainment. You know, because it's you know it's a business at the end of the day, and a lot of people are a lot of a lot of people go, goes through a lot of channels on the way. You know, and you know, so we we kind of keep everything here and as close as we can, and then let it go. So we're just stoked to let people uh, be able to finally hear this because it's not ours anymore, you know. Yeah. It's not new to us. We made it last year. Nice. Well, what can the fans expect when they crack open Rainier Fog? Uh, ten new songs. We, didn't re -re we, have not re -re we have not re recorded any of the old ones. These are all new ones. And I hope they dig them and they, they can or not. But we do. I mean, we make records we like, so we liked it. And I always, every time we, you know, the very first record, when, you know, and whatever, how long ago that was, it was, somebody was telling me the other day, been a long time since Facelift, I was like, that, doing that one, I was like, well, it's probably the only one, you know, you never know. And to be doing it still this day and for the same reasons and as friends and through all we've been through and it's, it's pretty cool, you know, we get to make the records we like and you'd hope people like it, but music, yeah, everything's subjective, you know. People are, it's got filler on it. People say all sorts of stupid shit, you know, and what do you think is filler? It's track six, it's filler. It's the person sitting right next to you might think that's their favorite song and it speaks directly to them, you know. It's like, that's the cool thing about music. If you can personalize it, it's yours, you know, and it's not ours anymore. And that's that's the cool thing. It's like I'm just I think tomorrow it's finally not ours, and that's that's a relief, you know, because you make this thing and you do this and you labor over it, and it's like oh, cool. As soon as it's done and tomorrow, then we, you know we just focus on the performing songs off of it and putting them into you know being able to play them, and and then in a hopefully you know things go I and mean, then we may do it again, you know. And uh, yeah, you know, and that's as far as it, as far as we go with it. You know, we just, we'll get to that when we get to that, and if it feels right, and we're excited about, we think we have something to we want people to hear. And now we're inside this amazing pop-up in the crocodile and we are with one of Allison Chain's managers, Susan Silver, who's going to walk us through all the stuff we have here. Susan, you ready to start the tour? Ready. Let's start right here. What all do we right. got here? Here we have four original show posters from back in the day and what I love about these two is they were opening for a wonderful band of friends called Mother Love Bone and the singer Mother Love Bone sadly we lost. They got a new singer, and they practiced under the name Mookie Blaylock, and then that band became Pearl Jam. Unreal, unreal. Now, what do you know about this printing on the on the particle board? I'm going to introduce you to the uh, masters that created this in the last several days, and they can tell you all about the, that part of it. Well, it is wonderful. They've actually printed these things on the particle board. I don't know how they did it, but it's, uh, it's an amazing feat of technology. Wonderful company called Astronauts and Poets. All right, and we got more stuff around the corner. Yes, do. This is Alice's first promo shot. Back in the day when I had another partner named Kelly Curtis, who then went on to manage Pearl Jam and still does. Their first single. I remember it well. Some, uh, in, some of their original uh, clothing from back in the, the 80s. And as you can see, always tongue in cheek with these guys. Oh. <laughs> uh, wonderful. I remember cracking open facelift for the first time with a bunch of friends, too. Beautiful. When, uh, the band signed to Columbia Records. This was the first album to come out, and the single was Man in the Box. Oh, I remember. As soon as I heard it, I was hooked. The first time. Oh, quite a rip. That's when you wake up in the middle of the night thinking about it. And it 
it just keeps going and going and going. So what we've done is started in the early days and gone on to take you through the, the, the history of the band, the, the highlights and the, the difficult times which this band has faced many of over the years. Yeah, they've had some tough ones. What's next, Susan? We have the astronaut and the poet. These are the people that designed this. This is Ryan hey, from so. Como. Hey, Ryan. How hey, are you? Doing well. How are you? Greg nice Morgan. Morgan. Hi. Kristen Robinson. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet both of you. So what I am most curious about is how you managed to do the printing on the particle board. Uh, well, we have a great source here in town, uh, a company called Graphics Inc. And we had seen some pictures, uh, you know, just from design inspiration and trying to figure out how we could get um, graphics on hard materials. So we sent him a picture and he's like, yeah, we could do that. Had a machine that could pretty much put anything through there. And so we just went for it. It was kind of a one and done, sort of cross your fingers and cranked it out. Well, it looks amazing. How did you decide on the particle board as a backing material? Well, we thought, you know, with an institution like the Crocodile and the texture and everything was here, it just seemed like a natural fit to do something that was visceral and natural and um, it just was, I don't know, quick and cheap and we were able to pull it together really fast. Oh, and it does fit in very well. Yeah, it just, it all came together really naturally. How about, uh, how long did it take you to put all this together? We're not going to set. <laughs> we did it very fast. <laughs> well, it looks terrific. There's a pop-up. Well, and the idea of a pop-up yeah, is right. to do it quickly, right? That's right. Yeah. Well, as you can see, they're lined up out the door waiting to get in. Yeah, it's so, really exciting. Yeah, they're going to absolutely love it. Craig, cool. thanks for that. Oh, Appreciate you bet. it. Thank you. Nice to meet you. This was a pivotal moment. More theater show, which was then captured on, uh, back then, VHS, and bundled with the record, and that blew the numbers out the door and put the band on the map. What I really want to stress, Ryan, is that people don't know about these guys is they have a wicked sense of humor. This was their first MTV Headbangers Ball interview. <laughs> the place that they did it was in the Hollywood Hills in a burnt out mansion. And as you can see, why not roll with it? Why not? This was one of, I don't know if your viewers can uh, watch that, but Van Halen tour, their first big, big tour, they surprised the guys who did, Van Halen did their own duck walk across the stage and then turned around to find, hello. Oh, that is hilarious. Hey. Uh, I'm still wandering. This is, this is George, we got the, you know. Phil Staley, Lane Staley's dad. Oh, hey, Phil. Hey, very nice you? to meet you. Yeah, I'm well. How are you? Yeah, yeah. Good. Well, Phil, do you mind if I. That? I promise I didn't set that up. <laughs> yeah, no, that was great. Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Well, go ahead. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. I, I can totally. Yeah. No, you can stick with me. What? No, go I, ahead. I can totally see the resemblance, too. Oh, can you? Yeah. <laughs> so. I obviously have to ask you what this means to you to have, uh, you know, such a great tribute to your son and his fine work. Yeah. Well, it, it means the world to me. I'm just, I'm, I'm totally impressed by, you know, what Susan has done and all her crew and everything. And it's just, uh, you know, I'm proud of Lane. I'm proud of the group. I'm proud of their sustainability or whatever, you know, I mean, hey, they're still there, they're still touring, they're still making records, I couldn't be, and they're all clean, they're all sober, they all look good, couldn't be prouder. Yeah, and uh, yeah. you know, uh, William, I think, has done a terrific yeah, job, you terrific know, stepping job. in the big shoes. The big shoes, yeah, big shoes. Well, and let me ask you, I mean, what's your sense of the big shoes that Lane left behind? Well... Of course, I'm, I'm pretty biased. I mean, you know, as far as I'm concerned, there isn't nobody that's going to match him. But, uh, you know, the group has done a wonderful job. William's done a wonderful job, you know. Uh, and like I say, I, I couldn't be prouder that the group is still carrying on. I mean, I love all those guys. Love them. You yeah. know, I mean, I check, you know, I still run texts with Jerry and Sean on the road. You know, so we've been close. We're, we're family. Yeah, family. You know? Yeah. Always, been, a always been in touch with her, my girl Susan. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's terrific. Yeah. So the last thing I want to ask right. you too is, last, uh, last you know, question. yeah, I, I'm a we're father. Get, yeah, you what? I'm a father. You're a father. When your son tells you, hey, I want to be a rock star, Dad, what do you say to him? I go for it. You know, because I want to be a groupie. <laughs> you know, hey, I mean, I've met people that. Uh, Larry is the tour mascot, carefully taken care of by Todd Shuss, who has been with the band as long as I have. And uh, you can meet Larry and follow Larry on his own Instagram account <laughs> and see just what Larry has chosen for his fashion statement on any given day. You never know. And how long has Larry been with the guys? This is uh, Larry's new, this, this album cycle. He has joined the fray. I hope he doesn't regret it. <laughs>